Hello, my friends. Good morning. Welcome. It's Thursday, the 25th of June. Very nice to see you. Welcome to um, the live lesson for IELTS Speaking Success. My name is Keith, if you don't know me. Um, I run the website IELTS Speaking Success, as well as the YouTube channel and the Facebook group. Welcome today. We're going to be looking at um, IELTS Speaking Part 3 questions today on the topic of maps and getting lost. Have you ever got lost, right? Well, today I'm going to help you find your way. <laughs> Hopefully, metaphorically as well as literally, right? Metaphorically, find your way through the jungle of IELTS and English learning. But seriously, we're going to be looking at in part two, there's a question, describe a time you got lost in a place that you don't know. And in part three, we're going to look at some of the questions related to that. It's all about um, getting lost, about maps, about finding your way, stuff like that. Great stuff. OK, <clears throat> a few hellos. Hi, Ali and Anna and Rimpa. Pavi, nice to see you. Anna on Facebook, great. Sanjana, Alexi, Uyen and Gagan on YouTube. Hello, Shakun on Facebook. Um, and we've got on YouTube, Kyla, Azurin and Dipita. And over on Facebook again, Philine and Antonia and Raul. Rawia. Nice to see you guys. Welcome. Come in, come and have a seat. Make yourself comfortable as we get ready to find our way through the IELTS speaking part three. Right. So if you're just joining, um, just to let you know, we're going to be looking at this. OK, we're going to be looking at. Oh, no, that way, that way. <laughs> Maps. Part three. Getting lost. Don't get lost. Great. So those of you who have had the test recently, thank you. Lots of you have been sharing your questions on Facebook and YouTube and the website. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure it's a big help to everybody. Good luck with your results. There are more and more tests starting up right now in different parts of the, the world. And um, I was just going to say to everybody, it, it's been a very difficult time. And it's still difficult because many places are still facing um, confinement or lockdown. Um, and I know it's really difficult with IELTS and preparation to stay positive, but do stay positive, right? We are here in this little community um, to help you stay positive, work together and keep focused on your learning, right? You will make it. Do be patient. Talking of being patient, um, I've had quite a few students who, who've told me they've done the exam, they didn't get their score, so they've done the exam like two weeks later and then two weeks later. And I, you know, have had lots of people saying, well, I've tried three or four or five times, like after a week or two weeks and again and again. Um, and I was thinking about this. I thought that was very, very strange. Um, I thought... If you're doing that, right, it's absolutely fine. I understand it's often a sense of urgency. You want to pass quickly because you need to get your score to study abroad or to immigrate. Um, but I do think it's all in the preparation, right? I think if you're repeating so often and so quickly, you're kind of relying on luck. You're hoping you'll get a better examiner, <laughs> better questions, topics you're more familiar with, and you're kind of hoping what's out there will be better. My suggestion for the day, my thought for the day is don't focus on what's out there. Focus on you. I would suggest waiting at least a month or two months before doing the test again so that you can focus on you, change you, right? In two weeks, you won't change. But in two months, you can change. Change three things. Change your level of English a little bit. You can improve your exam technique and change your attitude. So many students I work with are afraid and nervous, right? My suggestion for your attitude is be happy, right? 
Be excited, enjoy your study and enjoy the test. It's great fun. It's a small change in attitude. The problem with fear is you can't say to people, oh, don't be afraid, don't be nervous. It doesn't work, right? You're still nervous. In fact, you hear the word nervous and you get more nervous, right? If I say, don't think of a pink elephant, what have you done? You, you thought of a pink elephant, right? Because I said pink elephant. Don't be nervous. What do you do? Oh, nervous. I get nervous. So you have to replace your nerves with something else, right? Change it for something else. Replace your nerves with enjoyment, happiness, fun, a sense of fun. Enjoy your exam and things will change. Anyway, that is my tip for the day. <laughs> Great. Brilliant. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. Just to remind you, no, over here. I'll get used to that. We're looking at maps. Getting lost in part three. Um, let's see. We've got a couple of questions coming in, which we can have a look at just as we're starting off. OK, this is an interesting question from um, Asif over here. Can the informal accent like I ain't, I'd do this, I order, pray, be used in IELTS speaking test? Um, yes. So this is not accent, right, Asif? It's not accent. It's informal language. So just to be clear, we're not talking about accent or pronunciation, but informal language. Um, yes, we can use I'd is a contraction. I would, absolutely. I ought to, I order, I ought to. Yep, that's a weak form. That's perfect spoken English. Absolutely. I ain't. Yes, you can use. It's very, very informal. And some parents don't like that. But um, if you use it naturally, then yes. To be honest, if you're using ain't, I'm guessing you're already a very high level and you can use it naturally because it's such an unusual contraction. Um, but yes, the answer is yes in a quick word. OK, good. People looking for speaking partners. Excellent. <laughs> Am I late again? I don't know. Are you late again? Right. So um, here's another question. The last one, just for the moment. Um, Kuku Yu Yu says, can you suggest a method for learning vocabulary? Next week, we're going to be looking at um, vocabulary learning next Tuesday. This week, we did listening. Next Tuesday, vocabulary. Great. OK, as I kick off, just a couple of words. Um, let me hang on. I was just checking in on. I wanted to go in to post uh, something on YouTube. Come in, come in. Where do I get in here? Bear with me one moment. Right, I'm live now. OK, I can come in there. So um, first of all, a big thank you, as always, to the donors who are helping me run these live classes and dedicate time to them. A big thank you to Irina uh, Buketova, to Duan Grudi Pitinarak and Ahlam Almersal. Thank you very much. Um, really, really appreciate it. Now, a couple of um, resources for you, because I mentioned on Tuesday a resource called uh, Link Q right, which is useful for listening practice. Um, there's another couple of resources that have come up from the British Council, and I don't know if you know about these, so I wanted to share them with you. Um, let me just show you here from the guys at the British Council. They have two free courses. In fact, <laughs> to be honest, they've got lots of free courses, but they've got this one. Uh, let me show you here. <laughs> Let me get rid of me, have a more beautiful girl instead of me. Understanding IELTS listening, right? The other day, we've looked at listening. Um, this is a British Council program. It's free. Join the course for free. Um, you can do it. on. It's on Future Learn. You just go in to register and sign up for it. Um, 
it's it's great. I mean, it's a really good course. Um, it goes for about, well, you need to dedicate about three or four hours a week. Um, go, I'll put the link in the notes and then you can go and check it out. But it looks like a really, really good course. The British Council are great, right? Because they're providing all of these courses for free. I am a big fan of the British Council. I used to work for the British Council, so of course I'm a fan, but I think they do some great stuff. There's also this one, Understanding IELTS Writing. So many of you are worried about writing and want advice and guidance. Go and check out this one, Understanding IELTS Writing. Um, again, it's a fairly short course. Um, you get engagement with other people on the course as well. Learn about writing. Looks fantastic, right? Go and check those out. I will share the links with you now. Um, and I can do this on YouTube, but not on the others. But later, after the class, when you download the notes, you can go and get all of the contacts. Um, so bear with me. I'm going to put this at least here. So at least for those of, in, of you in YouTube, you can get both of the links there, right? Excellent. I think that was both of them. Yes, they're both in there. Writing, listening and writing. OK, cool. Now, what else? Other resources, lots of resources. Oh, yes, I was going to remind you about this resource. One more resource. Those are really, really useful. Um, this one, of course, you've heard me talk about before is um, italki. I put up an advert on italki. I think italki, like Cambly, is a great place to find a teacher or a tutor, reasonable price to practice, practice, practice. And you do need to practice, right? Um, on the link for this one, um, this is italki of given me a, a landing page here. When you buy one lesson, you get a second one free, which is great. Or they will send you a voucher for $10 in credits when you make your first purse purchase. Um, this is only available for new italki users. So if you're new to italki, you can go and check it out. Speak with native speakers um, and go and practice your IELTS there. This is not, by the way, advertising a class with me. Um, my schedule is completely full. I'm really sorry. It's completely full. But you can find other teachers there on, on italki and go and practice with them, which will be fantastic. Um, again, the link will be in the notes. Um, I can share that with uh, those of you who are on YouTube at the moment and you can uh, check that out. But that is... I think it's a really useful place to go and find some teachers and to go and practice. Okay, cool, super duper. Let me just put that in the YouTube box. And I apologize to Facebook users. Um, yes, I apologize to Facebook users because I can't post there at the moment, but you'll get it all later. Rightio, let's get into the questions. So maps and getting lost. OK, we're in part three. The cue card here is this one. Let me uh, share my notes first of all with you. Not this one. OK, it's, so the cue card is describe a time you got lost um, in a place that you don't know. The questions we're looking at today are here. Are maps important for traveling? Why do some people never use uh, maps? How has the way we find directions changed over time? And do some people have the skills to find directions faster than others? Right. OK, cool questions. Let's um, kick it off with the first question okay so the first question are is <laughs> are maps important for traveling what do you think mm -hmm. 
Mm. Right. Some people say, yes, absolutely. Maps are so important for traveling. Says Emmy. Fiona says, yes. Uh, Nguyen says, yes. Rimpa, certainly, yes. Abilasha says, yes, it guides us. Good. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? Let me... Where's, where am I? <laughs> where am I? Here I am. Yes. Okay. What have we got? Yes, yes, yes. Can we talk about Google Maps? Yes, you can talk about Google Maps. Absolutely. Yes. Um, they help us for navigation. Very nice. Good, good. Apurva said, yes. Um, it's It acts like a guide. It acts because act, of course, is a, is a verb, right? It acts like a guide. Great. Uh, Abhilasha says, yes, it guides us. Good. Now, it's important or it's uh, it's crucial, right? That's nice. You can say it's crucial. Let me move out of the way. <laughs> it's crucial, absolutely, but it does depend. Right? Joey says, yes, digital map is really helpful. Remember, if you're in the singular, right, you want to say, ah, a digital map is really helpful. Great. Absolutely. Interesting. Kyla says, I think that maps are not important. Very, very good. Right. Good answer there. Um, whoops, come out of the way. Are maps important? So you don't have to say yes. You can say no. Gul Safa says, of course, important. Of course, they are important. When I go anywhere, I always use maps. Great. This is nice from Raj. It helps as a reference. Very nice. It helps as a reference. Good. I like it. Um, what else have we got? <laughs> now, this is, a is okay, interesting. Kautzab. Maps help us in navigating our way around new or uncharted territories. Yes, maps help because it's plural, right? New or uncharted territories. Uncharted territories is a bit formal, I think, if you're speaking. Um, new or undiscovered places, maybe. I think uncharted territories sounds like you're a cartographer, right? Somebody who makes maps. Um, now here from Samira, interesting. Well, in my opinion, maps are useful, but not important as long as we have someone who knows the area. Right, good. Okay, brilliant. Good. Some good ideas there. Um, let me share with you then. I'm going to come in. I'll take away the question just so there's a bit more space and bring in some notes to share with you. Can I make this bigger? Slightly. Can I get out of the way? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, good. Are maps important for travelling? So with this question, right, are maps important for traveling? It's a very, very common question. Um, are blah, blah, blah important for blah, 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 right? Um, are computers important for communication? Um, are maps important for traveling? It's a very, very common question. The answer may be yes, it may be no. I think very often what you may do is say something like it depends, right? Um it depends if da 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 then yes on the other hand if da 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 then no right now that's a very simple template that can help you with this kind of question are maps important for traveling it depends um if you're traveling in uh, a new place you have never been to before then yes, I think they're crucial. If, on the other hand, you're going to um, a city or a place where you've been before or a place you know like the back of your hand, 
then no, maps are not really important, right? There's a nice expression. If you're going to a place you know, like the back of your hand, which means a place you know very well. A nice little expression. Okay, if you're going to a place you know to know like the back of your hand, then no, it's not important. We can also talk about they help you find your way, right? Maps help you find your way. Or maps help you orientate yourself. I think maps are really important because they help me orientate myself in a city I've never been to before, right? So instead of uncharted territories, which is a bit formal, use some nice grammar, a place I've never been to before, right? That is showing off your grammar in a really nice way, especially for places you could say where or not where, places I have never been before especially for places I've never been. And again, you could say to, if you want, I've never been to before, especially for places I've never been before. Right, nice bit of language. Other things we can talk about are, I have a terrible sense of direction. <laughs> so yes, I need a map, right? A terrible sense of direction. You can talk about you or you can talk about people. Yes, yeah, some people have a terrible sense of direction. So yes, they need a map. It's useful for planning your itinerary or your journey. So your itinerary, an itinerary is just your journey. Um, it's the different places you're going to visit, right? If I'm going to travel uh, from Manchester to Rome in Italy, I'm going to go Manchester to London, uh, across the Channel to Paris, and then down to Rome. That is my itinerary. It's my journey that I'm going to take. Okay, can you say that with me? Itinerary. Itinerary. Good. For, remember, for becomes for. For planning your itinerary. Oh, let me break it down. Your itinerary links. Your i and your becomes ya. Your. your itinerary. Your itinerary. For planning your itinerary. Good. Remember to stress planning itinerary. Listen. For planning your itinerary. Last one. It's useful for planning your itinerary. Can you hear the dum da da dum da da dum? It's useful for planning your itinerary. And fast, it's useful for planning your itinerary. <laughs> for the band eight people there. Brilliant. Um, now, I was thinking about this because recently um, I had a, a friend. Well, not recently I had a friend. <laughs> I've always had the friend. Recently, I had a friend who went on holiday and posted his itinerary on social media. So you could follow him on, on Facebook every day. He was updating this little map showing you where he was, right? Because nowadays we have websites where you can use digital maps to plan your route or your journey. You can book hotels, you can book flights, you can... Um, book trains and stuff there, and then share your itinerary in real time, good expression, with friends on social media. In real time means, you know, as it happens, like live, like now, you know, live as it happens, like this class, right, is in real time. So brilliant. I think that's really, really clever and something you could talk about, right? Cool. Now then, let me just come back and see how you're all doing. Yeah, good. Some good ideas there. Brilliant. 
Hill tracking. Great. Good. Brilliant. Lots of ideas. Ooh, some nice ones here. Brilliant. So let me share just a couple of your, your comments as well, because we've got some really interesting things. Um, from Gianta, who says, however, sometimes the navigation systems take us through unsuitable roads and streets in order to take us through the shortest route. That's so true. How many times have you ended up in a farm because Google Maps thinks there's a path or a road there? <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Nice. Yep, yeah, good. Let me share another one with Grace up here. Grace, you're too big. I'm sorry. Actually, no, you're not too big. <laughs> I don't mean big. I mean, your writing is too big. Yes, it is significant for those travellers. Uh, for those travellers. Right, I am going to correct you here, Grace. For those travellers, I'm not sure why you've got an apostrophe, especially if you are new to the place, so you won't be able to get lost. So you won't. To be able to get lost is strange, right? Why would you be able to get lost? It's not something you try to do. So we can change that, Grace. If you are new to the place, so you won't get lost. Get lost. And you will be able to enjoy your trip instead of worrying. Nice, Grace. Love it. Instead of worrying. Instead of, with the gerund, I-N-G. Nice. Instead of worrying where place which place <laughs> it's either where you are, are going to or which place which place you are going to brilliant very nice grace love it thank you very very much um nice very good so change we've exchanged a few things there let me come in um just to make this real for you i'm going to share with you um an online route planner right just to show you what it looks like it's so much fun if you're going on holiday you can uh, check this out i think it's routeplanner.com but watch this because this might also give you ideas to talk about in your test right especially about maps let me show you this the route planner video it's it's not a video it's me but listen, <laughs> I'm going to show you um, how this works. It's quite, it's nice. I think next holiday I'm going on, I'm going to use this route planner. Right. Come on, my friend. Here we go. Nowadays, websites where you can plan your itinerary, and this is called Route Perfect, right? Um, show me later. That's fine. Let's imagine, right, I'm planning a trip from my house, Santander, which is in Spain, and I want to take a trip up to London, go and see some friends up in London, right? I'm going to go for not 12 days, I have got 12 days, seven days, let's go by car, update trip, and this is so cool because now, look at this, it shows me a possible, it actually gives me a possible itinerary with different places to stop off overnight. One, two, three, four, five different places, including London and Santander. And here is the plan. How cool is that? But it gets better because it shows me my first stop, Santander. It tells me about the city. There's beaches. It's historic. I can look at some pictures. Oh, you won't get crowded beaches like that now. Or may actually you still do because so many tourists are so irresponsible. But then I go to Bordeaux, right? Look at that, Bordeaux. And if I scroll down, it tells me about Bordeaux as well. I can find out more about it. I can find out about Tours, the next place. This pedestrian friendly city known as the Garden of France. It looks quite nice. Ooh, a cathedral to visit. And that's Tours, which is the third one here, right? This one. It's brilliant. And if you go in and click here, actually, where was it? Santander. It gives me more information so I can plan my trip. Um, I can find hotels. I don't want a hotel in Santander because I live there. Uh, great. But it's brilliant, right? 
you can go in there, you can find out everything you need to find. Excellent. So that is, nowadays, we have these digital um, route planners that you can share with your friends as you're going as well. Brilliant. How cool is that, right? Very, very nice. Great. So that's the route planner. Um, now then. A few people are asking about the um, the captions on Facebook. Guys, if you're on Facebook, you can just turn off the captions, right? Um, it's very, very straightforward. If, if you just, can you see here, you've got your auto captions on, so it comes on automatically, but you can just turn it off down here. So if you're on Facebook, uh, you're in control. You can turn off the, the captions yourselves, right? Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's carry on with the next question. Oh, before we carry on, I've got more vocabulary for you. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so with that question, right, what was the question again? I've forgotten the question. Are maps important for traveling, right? Are maps important for traveling? With that question, we can say, if we're talking about digital maps, like Google Maps, they are useful. They are useful or, right, useful, um, invaluable, worth their weight in gold. Nice expression, right? Something that is useful, invaluable, we can say it's worth its weight in gold. In the plural, worth their weight in gold. The weight is how, how heavy it is, right? Try saying that with me. Worth their weight in gold. Good. Notice the w. So it's not a v or a z. It's a worth their weight in gold. Worth their weight in gold. Worth their weight in gold. Brilliant. And it's true, right? Digital maps are worth their weight in gold. If you're driving in a city you've never been to before, having that digital map to help you navigate through the complicated back streets, well, it's, it's essential. Um, so it's worth its weight in gold. However, if we're talking about paper maps, the good old fashioned paper maps, without a compass, they're pretty useless. The compass, right, is that thing that shows you north, south, west, <laughs> east. <laughs> Duh. Um, they're pretty useless. And other other expressions we can use, um, pretty useless. Notice pretty, right? Not just useless. Mm -hmm. Pretty useless, right? Use your adverbs. A waste of time. A waste of time. Notice the of becomes of. Do you remember on Tuesday we talked about weak forms? Of becomes of. A waste of time. Say with me. A waste of time. A waste of time. A waste of time. They're a waste of time. They're ineffective. Or they're worthless. Oh, poor things. They're worthless. <laughs> poor things. Great. Some nice expressions, right? Let's move on then, as I said, to the next question. Um, why do some people never use maps? I don't know. I do know, actually. I've got a few ideas, but I'd like to see what you think. Right? Why do some people never use maps? Tell me what you think, and I'm going to come into my red date tea today. <laughs> I love your comments, really, they're great. Yeah, good. Okay, let's get in. Let's let's um share some of your <clears throat> your thingamajigs. Thingamajigs? 
thingamajigs. Things. <laughs> um, well, here's a nice one. So here we've got uh, Fung says, well, it's likely that they have difficulty in reading paper maps. Very, very nice, right? To read a map. We do say to read a map. Excellent. Okay. Um, okay, Vishal, this is nice. I'm just going to make a slight change, but your idea is good because their knowledge, right, of that place so they are not using a map. Ah, not there, sorry. They have. Yeah, thanks, Vishal, because they have knowledge, right? They have knowledge of that place. They know that place like the back of their hand, remember? I don't know the back of my hand that well, actually. <laughs> it's a strange expression because they know that place like the back of their hand. Great. Um, so Malika says some people don't know how to use the digital map or paper map. That's right. They haven't learned it. They just don't know. <laughs> Maybe, Sunita says, because they find it inconvenient. Right. Good. Um, Abilasha says because they know the route. Good. They know the route. Nice. Or they have someone with them to navigate. <laughs> Rapinda, my favourite student, because they know the routes like the back of their hands. Like the back of their hands. Normally, it's in the singular, right? Normally, like the back of their hand. I know you've got two hands, but... <laughs> Brilliant. Red, this is nice, right? Maybe they're familiar with the place. Maybe they're already familiar with the place. Brilliant. Good. Okay. So um, let me come in. I'll just take that off and let's share a few notes that I've got here with you. A few ideas. Um, so, well, okay. Why do some people never use maps? With this question, right? Why do some people... It's a very, very common question why do some people blah, blah 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 well i don't know but think about which people right and focus focus on one group of people why because it makes the answer the answer easier and the more focused you are the more likely you will use focused special vocabulary right so think about the people if we're talking about holiday makers, well, they never use a map because they know where the beach is and they just walk from the hotel to the beach every day. They don't need a map, right? If we're talking about tourists, then if they are... Oh, well, if we're talking about tourists, I think they, by and large, they do use maps. However... If they know the the place well, like the back of their hand, they don't need to use a map. Um, now, if we're talking about millennials, digital natives, born in a digital age, um, they will probably use a digital map, but may never use the good old fashioned paper maps. Um, if we're talking about retired people, or folk, right? You can say retired folk. That's really nice. It's simple, natural English. If we're talking about retired folk, well, they don't use maps because maybe their eyesight is not very good. And they don't use digital maps because they can't see it clearly. Take me, for example. <laughs> I'm not retired, but listen, my eyesight all over the place. <clears throat> so other things we can say, right? They have a good sense of direction, um, they have a good sense of direction. That's a key, key phrase in this topic, right? Have a good sense of direction. You should learn that. Try it with me. So it's have, have a good sense, have a good sense of direction. Have a good sense of direction. Have a good sense of direction. Ah, can you see what I'm doing? I'm linking, aren't I? Have a good sense of direction. 
maybe they have a good sense of direction. Feel the stress, have a good sense of direction. Maybe they have a good sense of direction. Maybe they like to wing it or to play it by ear. Right, two idioms, brilliant idioms, are really useful. And this means, right, is not to plan or to improvise, right? So if you wing it, then you're not planning, right? So when I go on holiday, not now, but when I was younger, right, I would visit a new city. I would never use a map. I would never go to the tourist centre. I would just wing it. I would choose a street, start walking and see where it goes, right? I would play it by ear and see where I turn up. And if I find myself in an interesting part of town, great. If I found myself in a boring part of town, I would ask the locals to point me in the direction of an interesting museum or tourist attraction. But I love to play it by ear, right? Nice. Play it by ear. The other thing I had there was to point me in the direction of, right? which is to show me the way to somewhere, right? <clears throat> okay, so to, let me take that up for you. Point me in the direction of a museum. Can you point me in the direction of the post office? Like that. Other things, right? Um, remember this question, right? So this is why do some people never use maps? Maybe they need reading glasses, like me. Or they find the GPS maps on phones too fiddly, right? Fiddly is a lovely word, fiddly. Fiddly just means difficult to use because it's very detailed. Do you know on the phone, I haven't got my phone, but let's imagine, oh, I've got anything that looks like a phone, here we are. Let's imagine this is my phone and you know the screen is small and then it shows you the place and you have to press and it's very small and it's difficult and you press the wrong place and then you zoom in and zoom out. But if you've got big fingers, it's really fiddly to use, right? It's detailed, it's small and it's difficult to use. Fiddly. <laughs> Excuse me. Great word. So maybe the user interface, right? The user interface on my great model phone. The user interface, the screen, is too complex, too clumsy, too fiddly. They're all similar, right? Or maybe they're just a technophobe. Technophobe, somebody who hates technology. Whoops. <laughs> hates technology. Right? Maybe they're just a technophobe. Brilliant. Actually, you know, and maybe you disagree. So you could also say, actually, I reckon most people do use maps nowadays, especially digital maps such as GPS devices. Lovely. Great. Good. Some ideas there. Let me come back to you guys. Okay, why do some people never use maps? Actually, let's move on to the next question, which is an interesting question, right? How has the way we find directions changed over time? Hmm. Hmm. Guys, what do you think? Brilliant. Keep going. date tea with ginger. I wonder if all that ginger makes my hair ginger. Is that why I've got ginger hair? Because I eat, drink so much ginger. Ginger eyebrows as well. Maybe because I drink so much ginger. <laughs> Good. 
good. Right, okay, brilliant. Some great ideas coming in. Let me share your ideas with everybody, especially with me. <laughs> okay, so Ramadeep, nowadays there is GPS. Yep. Samira, I see it has become easier with the advancement of technology. Okay. Um, now, this is a good point here. Mohammed, um, is that your phone number? <laughs> are you giving your phone number? Are you trying to make friends? Um, people has. Okay, be careful with this one. And it's a great way to show everybody. Um, people have, right? People have a good sense of direction. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Uh, also, we've got maybe with online map. Now, again, remember... It's either singular or plural. So maybe with an online map or maybe with online maps. I'm going to make it singular, just this case. So Safar, uh, Safarova maybe with an online map, right? And maybe in this case, actually, it's one word. But don't worry, we're just speaking. Right. Digitalization has made massive improvements. I'll just change that. Great. Made massive improvements in helping us find our way. Sorry, I'm great crashing. I'm crashing into your answer, Mark Mood. Digitalization, this digital, digital. How do you say that word? Whenever you get a long word, right, break it down into the syllables. Digitalization. Digitalization. And get the stress right. Zation. Digitalization. Digitalization. Mm. Digitalization has made massive improvements in helping us find our way. Great. Thanks, Mahmoud. That's helped us pronounce complicated words, right? Difficult words. <laughs> um, right. Murad, this is very good. No need to ask for directions anymore. Just take out your smartphone, which is a good and a bad thing, right? Because people don't speak to each other. This is nice, Santana. Nowadays, we seek help digitally. Yep. So Anna says, I reckon that people used to ask for directions more in the past. And nowadays, we focus more on digital maps. This is a nice um, sentence, Anna, because you're comparing in the past and nowadays, which is great. And that's really, really good. Ask for directions. So we talk about directions normally in the plural. If you use direction in the singular, you're talking about north is a direction. South is a direction. But we ask for directions. Brilliant. Thank you, Anna. Right. Let me look for some guys on Facebook because there's fewer of you on Facebook. Um so let me try and get some. Uh, right. Okay, Siba, this is good. <laughs> uh, it facilitates our life not to get lost and waste time finding the correct directions. Great. Nice. Good. Nice. Brilliant. Noah. Hi, Noah. In the past... We could use paper maps or ask pedestrians. What a lovely word. Pedestrians. Love it. That's people who are walking. Now we have Siri. Ask Siri. <laughs> I, I always expect Siri to start speaking. Um, or other useful apps. Double P to ask. Great. Brilliant. I'm going to add a P for you. <laughs> lovely. Very, very nice. Um Let's come and have a look. We've got... Okay. Well, this is interesting. A few of you have mentioned this. By posting directions on the road by government officials. 
directions on the road. So you're talking about the uh, the signage, these big signs on the road, right? Which is true, which we never used to have. Also by communication with local people, right? Yes. Or that's interesting. Depending on your country, this might be now or it might be in the past, I guess. Okay, cool. Super, brilliant. Um, cancel. I'll take you off and let's have a look. I'm just going to take off this one as well. Let me share some ideas with you. Here we go. So here was the question. Um, how has the way we find directions changed over time? Okay. Now, as you said, a few of you have used the, these expressions, right? In the past, you can also say something different. In days gone by, right? It's nice. Still natural. Absolutely, you can use it. In days gone by, we used to use paper maps. In fact, we used to ask pedestrians the way. Great. Okay. We used to. Remember, used to is t. We used to, we used to ask people the di the way, right? Ask people the way. Lovely. Um, we used to ask people for directions. Okay, just be clear. For directions, or better still, for directions. We used to ask people for directions. Um, this will confuse you, but I'm just telling you this for your to understand clearly what's happening when you listen. When you've got a vowel and a vowel, we normally join them with another sound, either a z or a w, to ask. So we actually say to ask. We used to ask people the way. It's a soft w, it's not w, it's a soft w. If you listen carefully, we used to ask people the way. We used to ask ask it's a very soft word we used to ask people the way and i tell you this not to teach you for speaking but more so when you hear it for listening skills you can recognize it okay try it with me though because it's you know I'm, i like to get you speaking we used to ask people the way we used to ask people the way good and now we used to ask people for directions. Great. Remember the f for directions. And altogether, we used to ask people for directions. Ah, nice. Great. So it's a very soft W. Okay. Um, what else have we got here? Well, we even use the sun, right? That's true. We use the sun to know where the direction north was. But now it's become digitalized. Again, a difficult word. Digita, not ta, t. Digitalized. 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 Stress on the d. Digitalized. Now it has bleh. now it has become digitalized. Great. Or we have become rather over dependent. Right? Over dependent. Great word. And it's true, right? If you don't have your G GPS, then you're walking down the street and you think, oh my God, how can I find my way and you think can I can I ask somebody <gasps> I've not asked anybody for the last 20 years what am I going to do we've become rather over dependent notice the use of rather right instead of being a bit boring and saying, well we are over dependent no we are rather over dependent and squeeze in the present perfect we have become rather over dependent on GPS tools. And there's more, right? Nowadays, not only can we find directions, we can also find restaurants, museums, in fact, you name it, almost anything in that area or in that vicinity. Nice word, vicinity is in that area. Okay. Um, in fact, 
you name it, great expression. You name it just means anything, right? Anything. Right? Anything and everything. Um, do you like fruit? Yeah, I like apples, pears. In fact, you name it. I love everything. You name it just means everything. So, so this refers to Google Maps, right? It now has the explore feature. Explore restaurants near you or a pharmacy or a, I don't know, a shop near you. And you can find anything, you know. In fact, you name it, you can find it on Google Maps in the vicinity where you are. Okay. Lovely. Jubbly. Also, I just wanted to show this inversion, right? It's nice. Not only, so we invert with not only with the inversion, instead of saying we can, right? Not only we can, no, 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 no. Not only can we, so it's not a question, it's an inversion with not only. Not only can we find directions, we can also find restaurants. This is slightly more formal, right? This is the kind of structure you may use in writing, but absolutely you can use it in speaking as well, right? Excellent. Very, very nice. Good. So just one or two ideas for you there to share. Okay. Um, now then, we are coming towards the end. But before we do, let's just have a little share. Let's have a look at what you've got. I'm going to spend the last few minutes. Um, I'm going to review a few words with you and then take one or two questions and then tell you about next week. Oh, and also the riddle. I forgot the riddle. We always must have a riddle. <laughs> Should we do the riddle now? Yeah, let's do the riddle now. Okay, guys, here's the riddle. <laughs> here's the riddle. Are you ready? What is black and white and red all over? What is black and white and red all over? Light. Mm, light's not black. <laughs> I don't think. Sky. Sky's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, let's have a look at some of these because these are quite interesting. Sky. You got this. Hang on. Sorry, wrong one. Because I've got a different answer, but there may be different answers. Um, sky. It's black. Yes, it's white. Mm, it's more blue than white. Red at sunset, possibly, possibly. Um, eyes, black. Oh, black is the pupil. Red, they can be, and white. But the thing here, what is black and white and red all over at the same time? Colours, no. Light, no. Light's not black. <laughs> Humans. Black, yes. White, red. Do you know some red humans? Are they from Mars? Don't know about red. Not not humans. Moon, black, red. Oh, well, possibly. Not bad, but no. <laughs> coffee, black, red coffee. Hmm, interesting. Not quite. Flag, black and white and red. Oh, that's nice, actually. Um, it was Hamid. Hamid said the flag. Possibly, but no. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Nobody's got it. Mm, okay, if I write it out for you, this might help you guess. <gasps> oh, somebody's got it. One person, two people. Oh, now you've got it. Now you've got it. Okay, I will write it out for you, and then you will uh, you will see why. <laughs> Let me show you. Hang on a minute. Bear with me. When I write it out, you'll go, oh, that's what he means. That's what he means. What is black and white and red all 
over. Let me take you away, Hamed. What is black and white and red? Can you see how I spell red, right? Ah, that's, ooh, where are you going? So the answer, and a few of you have got this now, is the newspaper. It's black, it's white, and red to read, right? It is red by many people. It's red all over. Oh, well done. Very, very nice. Excellent. So to those of you who uh, got the right answer. <laughs> I'm just playing with all of my toys here, having great fun. <laughs> well done. Quite a few of you got the right answer there. Okay, excellent. So let me just... Um, just recall some of the interesting expressions we've had today. Um, to know something very well, I know it like the back of my hand, right? Um, when you don't plan to, to wing it or to play it by ear, right? To know where the north and the south is, I have a good sense of direction. Right, exactly, good. What else did we have today? We had quite a few. Um, in the past, in days gone by, we had some great pronunciation, digitalized, digitalization, digital maps. When we look at a journey, and we plan different spots, different stops. That's the itinerary, itinerary. We can talk about tourists or holiday makers, holiday makers. Right. Brilliant. What else? Anything else that was useful? Ah, it's all useful, right? It's all useful. Great. So the last few moments, let me pick out one or two questions. If you do have any questions, if you don't, well, that's it. I'm going for my second breakfast. Oh, you've still got answers to the riddle. Let's see. Any questions? Oh, newspaper, newspaper, newspaper. Brilliant. Oh, can you put light on the computer? Okay, here's a question. Yep, very nicely. Um, okay, actually a few questions. Okay, um, Manas, is not only da, 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 do I like English, but I also like, yes, it is also correct. In English, naturally speaking, we tend not to use the but. Not only do I like this, but I like this. Not only do I like this, I like this as well. We tend not to use the but, but you can. Absolutely. Yes. Um, Abul Qasim. Can you make more videos for part one? Wow. Um, I don't know. There are quite a lot of videos on YouTube for part one. Um, if you want more, you can certainly go to the course on Udemy. There are lots in the course on Udemy. Um, but as I go along, yes, I am making more videos. I don't know about part one. I'm actually thinking about new videos at the moment. So that's a good idea for me. SD, can you put light on the computer-based IELTS and advice on computer-based or paper-based? Right. Okay. First, I mean, a very, very short thing here, I guess, is just um, they are essentially the same. So not one is easier than the other. It really depends. The key question for you is, are you comfortable with a keyboard? And are you comfortable typing rather than using a pen, right? I don't know why I'm showing you a pen because that's a pencil. <laughs> As if you don't know the word pen. But if you're comfortable with your handwriting, then the paper test is better. Some people are comfortable with the writing with a pencil and rubbing it out. Other people are more comfortable with a keyboard. So whichever is more comfortable, that's the key. When it comes to the reading, 
you actually get the on the computer test you get the que the the text here and the questions here so you can see both right on the paper test you have to turn over the paper read the text then turn over to the question then come back and it's a bit more complicated but some people like that because on the paper it's easier to highlight right on the digital it's a bit more difficult so it's personal choice what you're more comfortable with okay brilliant good um anything else before i finish oh it's a good question is there any effect of gestures on speaking band score no not at all none it's a test of your language not of your body language but a good test a good test a good question uh, ramandeep great okay guys i'm going to finish up here thank you very very much um for joining me today um as what else there's nothing else other than to tell you about next week so next week right what i'm going to do on tuesday is vocabulary skills how to learn vocabulary and then on thursday we'll be looking at some part one questions right i haven't chosen them yet but as our friend requested uh, we'll look at some part one questions so tuesday vocabulary skills thursday part one questions that's it from me i would like you very much to enjoy your day um, if you have any questions then do just message me or let me know any suggestions i really appreciate them in the meantime, enjoy your day, enjoy your tea, enjoy your studying. If you're taking the test, enjoy it. Remember, change yourself. As Gandhi and Kennedy and Einstein all said, right? Don't try and change the world outside. Change yourself. Brilliant. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.